Arboreal desert is the Sonora, part of which lies in southern Arizona along the border. This desert is full, though they are different from the plants that most of us know. There is something strange and mysterious about them and the country in which they grow. There are no rivers or streams of any kind in this desert, and the plants must store up all the water they need from short, hard rainstorms which occur occasionally in the summer. This is the fishhook cactus, so named because of the shape of its bark. The coyote is one of the shy desert dwellers. The Papago Indians, who call themselves the desert people, have lived here for hundreds of years. In order to exist in such a barren place, they developed a remarkable way of life that made use of nearly everything that grows on the desert. The crooked mesquite was practically the only tree that they had. They used this to hold up the corners of their houses. The straight, slender ocotilla formed the sides of the house. First, it was cut and trim. Then it was lashed together to form the side. Adobe mud was used to plaster over this form. And since the ocotilla had big thorns, the mud had to be thrown on. The giant saguaro cactus had a place in the Papago home, too. Ordinarily, the cactus is green and thorny, but when it dies, the outer covering of green falls away, leaving the tough, fibery inner rib exposed. These ribs were used to hold up the roof, or perhaps to add strength to the sides of the house. Leather thongs were used to tie the saguaro rib to the post. Sometimes windows were formed by leaving a space unplastered, and then the ocotilla would grow again, and the papagos had a growing window box. There were no big trees to furnish wood for cooking and heating, so the Indians again made use of the mesquite tree. Carrying many loads long distances made these women skillful at carrying things on their head. The leaves of the yucca plant were used to make baskets. Before the yucca could be used for basket making, it must be dried. During most of the year, the Papagos had to live in the mountains bordering their desert. For here, there were springs which provided them with water. The vessels which the people used for carrying water were made from materials found right near home. And the pottery was built up in an unusual way by hammering the material around a stone anvil with a paddle.
powdered rock kept the pottery from sticking to the stone anvil. Baskets had many uses. They were made by sowing bear grass with a dried yucca leaf. First, the yucca leaves were separated into strips of a size that could be used for sowing. Other natural plants found on the desert were woven into the design for decoration and color. Large baskets were used to store grain, for the Papagos were not successful in raising a crop every year. Sometimes they lost their crops one year out of every three. These large baskets stored the grain from a good year so that they could eat during a bad one. Sometimes an oil was used as a cover for the storage basket. The wheat was ground on a smooth, flat grinding stone. Rabbits added meat to the Indian diet. In the spring, the desert blooms and the blossoms make a riot of color. The giant saguaro has a fruit that is good to eat. It is not unlike a fig, and it is very sweet. The papagos gather the fruit, knocking it down from its high perch with poles made from saguaro rib. The edible portion of the fruit is squeezed out. The thick outer cover is discarded. Saguaro fruit is cooked for several hours over a slow, steady fire. Two products result from the cooking. One is a thick, sweet red syrup used to make wines or jam. The other is the seeds. The seeds must be separated from a stringy red fiber, and this is done by pounding and sifting. Then the seed is ground into flour. Late summer rains brought moisture to the desert floor, filling up water holes, that had been dry for months. Then the Papagos moved to the desert for their summer planting. They had special baskets which helped them to move their belongings. These baskets were called carrying nets and were suspended from the forehead. They eased the load on the long journey. On the desert, they planted their crops. Their homes for the summer were right alongside their fields. Planting was an important job, and every member of the family helped with a chore. 
Since there was no regular rainfall, nor streams with which to irrigate, the Papagos planted in a spot left damp by streams running down from the mountain. But when the summer rains did come, they came in torrents, moving stumps and boulders on the way. Sometimes they washed over the fields the Indians had planted and took part of the crop away. Sometimes they took out an entire crop and gutted the field. The white men brought many new things to the desert people. For one thing, they brought Christianity. And under the direction of the missionaries, the Indians built several large and beautiful missions, like San Avir, near Tucson. Although this church is old and somewhat deteriorated, it is still beautiful. And what is more important, it is still in daily use. Another important thing that the white men brought to the desert was cattle. The first animals were poor and small, but they were a large addition to the Papago food supply. Before long, the cattle learned to make use of all of the food on the desert, just like the Indians did. The animals found their drinking water at the same place the Indians did. And while this wasn't a very satisfactory system, there wasn't any other water available. Horses were an important addition brought by the white men. Before that time, the Papagos always moved about on foot. But aside from these few changes, life in the desert goes along much as it did before the white men came to that country. The same desert homes are built in the same desert setting. But there is one very important change. Not so long ago, the lack of water forced the Papagos to live in the mountains away from the fields. In recent years, Indian irrigation has dug hundreds of wells to provide water for their villages, making this migration unnecessary. The Indians maintained these wells themselves, the government furnishing only the equipment and materials needed. No longer do the people use the same water holes as the cattle. Today, there are better ways of storing water. And even though a spigot is available in some villages, carrying an oil on the head is still the way. Modern medical science is getting a start on the desert. There are only two field nurses to take care of 5,000 Indians, but they are getting a start. water, and one of those modern pills will soon have this boy back in school. Geography is especially important today, and the children keep up their interest. Some of these small one-room schools in the desert have as many as six grades under the direction of one teacher. While the older children study their geography, the younger ones learn to read. Though these children live far out on the desert, they still can use the library. This one is on wheels and visits 28 different schools each month. The older 
children select their own books. But the younger ones may need a little help. The old methods of farming are still precarious. Often the Indians lost their entire crop one year out of every three as raging torrents washed over their fields. To help alleviate this condition and provide more stable methods of flood farming, irrigation engineers imported the bolsa system from Mexico. In Spanish, bolsa means pocket. And in practice, a dike is built which forms a pocket to catch the flash flood. Gates control the water and direct it into the bolsa. The pocket is flooded with a foot or two of water, which is allowed to sink into the ground. After the water has been absorbed, the weeds are burned off and the land is planted. Even though it doesn't rain, the soaking stores sufficient moisture inside the bolsa to bring the crops to maturity. Not only does the bolsa trap enough moisture to assure the crop, it also provides a protective dike which keeps other floods from washing them away. In one area, a small storage dam traps flood water and stores it for irrigating fields. This dam is only full after a hard rain, and then it is used like any irrigation storage system. Another desert material found its way into the fences which keep the cattle out of their fields. The mesquite tree found still another use in building strong corrals for their stock. Poor stock like this is one of the greatest problems confronting the Papagos. Village meetings which everyone can attend discuss the stock situation. The desert people have an efficient and democratic system of self-government. Representatives of all villages meet on the tribal council. One of the most important things the council has done is to sponsor credit and help the people improve their stock. Prize bulls owned by the community herd are available to all members of the tribe. Stock water developments are doing much to improve the herd. Another worthwhile thing sponsored by the Tribal Council 
is the Papago Arts and Craft Board. A member of the tribe is regularly employed to buy the baskets from the weavers to ensure the quality of the baskets as well as to make certain that the worker receives a fair price. A well-stocked shop provides a variety of shapes and sizes of baskets for either the tourist or the wholesale buyer. Not the least of the activities sponsored by the Tribal Council is the Papago Fair, held in the winter every year. There is an opportunity for displaying and selling Papago arts and crafts. Large crowds are attracted to the rodeo contest. is fun, but it also bears a definite relationship to the daily life of these Indians. cow is disappearing from Papago land. Its place is being taken by a heavier animal, better all around. The desert people are going ahead, making the most of all of their resources, cattle, bulls of farming, even threshing the grain in a way almost as old as man. Winnowing in a gentle breeze blows all the dirt and foreign matter out of the grain. On this beautiful but barren desert, the Papagos live. The government has helped them, but the Indians themselves are forging ahead, making use of all of their resources and finding new ways to improve them. And this new generation of the desert people is learning to become an even more important part of the great American scene. 